Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs and video games, and today I'm playing Hollow Knight. But this one is a special video. This is the speedrun of Hollow Knight. What you're watching right now is an edited down version of my speedrun. If you'd like to see the full thing, there should be a card in the top right hand corner of this video you can click, or a link in the video description to get to the archived live stream. So this is going to be a very different speedrun than most posted on YouTube, because I am playing this sort of as a blind speedrun. And what I mean by blind in this circumstance is I, I played through Hollow Knight, but I've watched no footage of anybody else playing Hollow Knight, and I know none of the speedrunning tips, tricks, exploits, glitches, or sequence breaks that others might use. I created the route that I'm going to take in this speedrun myself. Because I've created this route myself, and I've done that only from watching my own footage, it could end spectacularly, but we'll see when we get there. So one of the things that will be a little bit different for this speedrun, maybe than you'd expect, is that I'm going to go around, like I am now, and collect money. This is because I need 1800 money to buy the Lumafly Lantern from Sly. I'm pretty sure you can beat the game without getting the Lumafly Lantern, but I sincerely doubt my ability to do so. There are several places during my route that there will be spikes and enemies in dark rooms that I, I have not practiced. So I will need the Lumafly Lantern to get through those. I will need that relatively early, so the early part of the speedrun I am going to be spending more time than you might expect fighting enemies that I think give more money and collecting money eggs on the way. To explain my route that I'm going to use, let me explain it by talking about what you have to do in order to beat this game. So in order to beat this game, you have to defeat the Hollow Knight in the Black Egg. And in order to get into the Black Egg to fight the Hollow Knight, you have to break the three seals. The Watcher, the Teacher, and the Beast seals. I did skip the Cartographer there because it, his map costs money, and I, I really need all my money. I also don't know if I've found this before. I'm gonna have to check if I've ever found that secret before. I think I may have found something that I haven't. And it had a money egg in it, which is excellent for this particular run. Let's focus on the Watcher to explain the things that I need to complete the game. The first thing that I need to do to get to the Watcher is to get into the City of Tears, where the Watcher resides. And in order to do that, I need the City Crest, which is held by the False Knight. On the way to the False Knight, I am going to be getting a couple of other things. One of those is rescuing Sly, so that we can purchase the Lumafly Lantern later. And another of those is defeating an enemy and collecting a grub. The grub will give me money, and the enemy that I'm fighting will give me money. I think we're coming across, yeah, the first mini-boss. This mini-boss is so that we can save Sly. I should be a little bit more careful about taking damage because healing does take a little bit of time and dying would take a lot of time. There will be some times in this game that I, I go for a little while without resting and I'm a little bit nervous about those. So I'm going to rest at the chances that I can because a, a death should not end the speed run but a couple of deaths in a row might. I'm pretty happy with how far I've gotten so far. I, I really had no idea how long it would take to go through the different things. And being only five minutes in and having rescued Sly is wonderful. That's a real problem. My controller does not have batteries and I just replaced them. Well, so much for my intention to replace my controller batteries before I started this. Apparently I replaced them with some bad batteries. 
This enemy right here is one of the ones that gives the most money that I could tell early on in the game. So it's a nice way to save up some cash. And next is the False Knight. I wonder if I can tr trigger this battle. Ho ho! He just falls on the other enemies here. So the first boss of the game. At this point in the run, I'm really not worried about anything. I am not worried about the False Knight in the slightest. The first time that I will be worried about something is in the Green Path. In order to get into the City of Tears, one of the things that I need to be able to do is to dash, and therefore I need to fight the Hornet in the green path in order to get that ability. I need dash for a lot of reasons, I think, but one of them is I need it to get the Mantis Claw. There's a step when you're getting the Mantis Claw that where you have to dash along a platform. As John Kramer says, one of the other reasons to get dash is that Dash is extremely helpful for battling. Battling any boss in this game is easier with Dash. Got him. Alright, I think that will be the False Knight down, if I recall correctly. Great. That's the False Knight, 1125, and that includes replacement of batteries in my controller. So the next thing on my list is to go into the Green Path, but in order to go into the Green Path, I need to get by a Balder, which means that I need to go up here to visit the Snail Shaman and get the Vengeful Spirit. Hello, Snail Shaman. This is also a wonderful time to save. I believe that you will trick me and lock me in the dungeon, but I will escape. So to get to the Watcher in the city, the other thing that I really need to do in order to get there is to go up the Watcher's Tower. Now the Watcher's Tower, one of the first rooms in the Watcher's Tower, has a pretty tall jump that I need to make. And in order to make that tall jump, I need the Monarch Wings. Great. Let's see how quickly we can take him out. I need the little Balder. Come on, little Balder. Got him. I believe this is the only charm that I'm going to get, by the way. I could go on the left path here. I'm going on the right path because there's a grub. And getting the grub means that I'm going to get more money later. Now, the first of the leaf monsters. This, these enemies are the reason that I have to fear really anything in the green path. Because they could legitimately kill me. I'm planning to fight three more of them. The reason I'm planning to fight so many of the creatures that could kill me is that they have a lot of money. And I need that money. That's the first one down. Next we're going to go past the place where we could save Zote, but we won't. Alright, here is the most dangerous part for this section of the game. I'm fighting three of these enemies. There's one down. Next. Gosh, that was two damage. I actually thought I got hit three times there. Come out. All right, now what we're going to do is heal. Got 
got him. All right, one more of those, but to be fair, I am pretty low on health. Couldn't pass this 130 or so money buy, though. Okay, here we go. And this one, it's for his money and the grub that he guards. And good time to heal. Bad time to heal. Terrible time to heal. There are a few things that I need to pay for besides the Lumafly Lantern, such as Stagways. Great. Survived on one health. Not really worried about the Hornet. The one thing to worry about here is that I have not saved in a while. So I have to play the Hornet well. Do not die from the Hornet. There are a lot of times in this battle where I can heal because she does get staggered several times. And I'm also not very worried because I know how to fight the Hornet. The Monarch Wings means that I need to go down to the Ancient Basin and fight my Lost Kin. Getting to the Lost Kin requires you to go across a giant field of spikes, which essentially means that I need the Crystal Heart, which I can get in the Crystal Peak. I think there are maybe two more times she gets staggered, maybe one more. And so far you've done nothing to me, Hornet. This is going very well. Great. And now we've got the Mothwing Cloak. And we can dash. The other bit about the Ancient Basin, in order to get there, I need to go through the Royal Waterways. The route that I'm planning to take to go through the Royal Waterways requires me to break through some breakable ground. I don't actually know if that is required. But the route that I have takes me through that, which means I need to go into the Soul Sanctum and fight the Soul Master. Even though that may not technically be required, the other reason to go into the Soul Sanctum and fight the Soul Master is that there's a lot of money in there, and getting lots of money is still required at that point in the speedrun. My goal for the Fog Canyon is to not mess with any of the big jellyfish. Big jellyfish, I intend to ignore you completely if I can. Next is getting the mantis claw, but there's a lot of space in between there and here. Now I am going to open this stagway. This is one of the few times that I am going to be expending some cash. I plan to come back to the Stagway later. So I did have to spend a little bit of money to open it. There is a Mask Shard right there. We will be getting that later in the game. In this route, there are four Mask Shards that I'm planning to get, which means that I will complete one Mask. I will have six spaces going into the Hollow Knight. These shrooms are going to give me a charm notch, which is excellent, but also I don't think that I'm going to use it. Like I said, I'm not really collecting many charms, so charm no notches don't really do much for me. But maybe when I go to the, the Hollow Knight at the end, I might kit myself out a little bit with more charms, depending on how much money I have. This is where we needed dash. Aside from the other reasons to need dash, that was the place that I absolutely needed dash in order to get the Mantis Claw. And now that we have the Mantis Claw, we can go to the City of Tears. 
my nail upgrade plan. I am planning to get zero pale ore, which means that I will only be upgrading my nail once because the first upgrade you don't need any pale ore for. The reason that I'm not planning to collect any pale ore is that I honestly couldn't find any pale ore that was going to be easy and fast to get. My, my DPS will be low. I'm going to have to use my skills in avoiding hits. The only boss that I'm honestly a little concerned about how much damage I'm dealing is going to be the Hollow Knight. So now that we're in the city, first thing to do in the city is go down and upgrade my nail so that we do a little bit more damage. Hello Coral, we saw you very recently. How did you get over here that fast? He's a speedrunner too. I do not want a blunt nail. I want a sharp nail. John Kramer tells me that the first nail upgrade is a lot more damage. That's good. I don't know any of the numbers. I just knew that it was probably good to get. Glad to hear that it's a good decision. Wonderful. Next is the Soul Sanctum. The Soul Sanctum is a place where I'm worried. There are a lot of enemies in the Soul Sanctum, and there are not a lot of benches. I'm not worried about the Soul Master himself. It's the, it's the enemies on the way to the Soul Master. This is another grub. This, this was planned. This is one of the easier grubs to get in the game. In my plan, I am planning to get five grubs, at least. The first four gives me 100 money to go toward the various things I need to spend money on. The fifth grub gets me a mask shard. One of the few mask shards that I will be collecting. Hello, you. This is one of the mini bosses that I feel like I'm just good at this mini boss. He telegraphs his moves so much that I just pretty much always know what he's about to do. And that helps against bosses. There we go. Also, he's got a load of cash on him. 200. Come at me, Soul Master. I see you back there. This would be one of the worst times to die in this run. Simply because I have saved such a long time ago. The Soul Master... My... My rules for fighting the Soul Master is to be patient. Which is hard to do in a in a speed run, honestly. Like I'm I'm a little more caught up in how fast things are going than I usually am while playing this game. But I need to be patient because there's a lot of times where it's just hard to hit the Soul Master. Unless he just stands there. I don't I don't recall him really just standing there many times. That's my favorite time to hit him. There we go. Get a couple more hits on. And now for the crazy phase. Getting the Descending Dark, which, as I mentioned, may may not be required, but I, it's required for the path I'm planning to go on. He just seems so slow, having fought the Soul Tyrant a number of times. The, the original version of the bosses seems so slow. I do need to be a little bit careful here, because there's really not a time that I can heal in this section of the battle. So that one damage that I took uh, could actually be meaningful. I mean, it won't be, but it could have been.
We have made it through the first set of maps that I have created for myself. So there's the cartographer and there's a bench. I'm ignoring both of them because they both cost money. I'm doing pretty well on cash. This room is an important room because way up here, there is a simple key. And I do need a simple key in order to get into the royal waterways. Hello, all of them followed me in, eh? <laughs> Great. Simple key, that'll allow us to get into the royal waterways. And we get to save. Important save point. Unfortunately, here's another 200 money that we're spending. The next place that we're going is the Crystal Peak. And I'm going to get the Dream Nail as well as the Crystal Heart there. Well, the Dream Nail will be in the resting grounds, but that'll be through the Crystal Peak that we'll get there. In order to get the Dream Nail, I'm going to have to go through a dark room with spikes. So this is the time for me to collect money and purchase the Lumafly Lantern. There are the grubs that I have to turn in, which will give me some money. And because I'm, I'm a little bit short, I'm going to go rescue another grub. Great. There's a grub. He is saved, even though I dropped down. And let's get this money egg too. And then go visit the sad guy. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's one in the distance. There's our first mask shard. And I am very close to being able to afford the Lumafly Lantern. So let's go around and collect a little bit more cash from enemies. Actually, is there a money egg up here? There are two money eggs, three money eggs up here. Great. And we've got our cash. And now for the rest of the run, we, we will need a little bit more cash, but a lot less than we've needed so far. So I need to be careful not to accidentally buy something. Let's buy the Lumafly Lantern. There we go. 25 money to our name. Let's go to the Crystal Peak. There's really nothing that I'm worried about in Crystal Peak. I'm actually going to be fighting very few enemies here. I'm not even going to be fighting the Crystal Guardian if I can help it. And I think that I can help it. Now there's the bench. That bench leads to... Oh, didn't mean to come up here, but because I did, we got the shopkeeper's key. I don't think that actually helps me in any way. But I did get it. That bench leads to the Crystal Guardian. And... If my route is correct, we're going around him. I need this crystal heart for a couple reasons. I've mentioned that I need it to get to the Lost Kin so that I can get the Monarch Wings. But the other reason that I need the crystal heart is to get Isma's Tear. I'm going to be getting Isma's Tear when I go into the Royal Waterways. Now we can Super Dash. Next is to the Resting Grounds, where I intend to get the Dream Nail, which is required. I need the Dream Nail to break any of the seals. So this is the Dark Room that would have easily killed me if I did not have the Lumafly Lantern. I think the Resting Grounds has the only tramway that you don't have to pay for. So even though we have almost no money, I can get away from the Resting Grounds. 
easily that would have killed me. I will cut them down with the weapon before me. Great, so now that we have the Dream Nail, we can go slay Dreamers. Granted, we still need to get to the Dreamers, and that requires a few more things. Next, we're going to the Royal Waterways. The way that I'm going to get there is by going through the City of Tears. Back to one of the few Stagways that we have paid for. I think that last time I was right here, I could have gone down near where Lem is and opened a door. Did not do that before. I'm doing that now. And here is the Royal Waterways. We've got everything that we need to go through the Royal Waterways and defeat the Dung Defender and get Ismus Tier. That is the one place that I think I, I needed to have the Desolate Dive right there. Uh, you can come out of the ground, man. The Dung Defender is not too bad of a battle. This is another one that I am not really worried about. And basically every time that I do take damage, I'm going to heal at the next opportunity. Just to be sure. Dying, of course, could make the run take longer. Oh gosh. Probably shouldn't be too aggressive. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Don't die. Said that I wasn't worried about the Dung Defender? I am now. There we go, let's heal again. Oh gosh, I just got hit a couple of times by balls. There, heal a couple of times. Don't die on the Dung Defender. I think the crisis moment has been averted. It does take longer to defeat these enemies, of course, without any but the first nail upgrade. And my, my plan of avoiding damage hasn't actually been executed very well so far. Let's hope that does not continue later in the run. So my speedrun goal, by the way, the achievements for speedrunning are for 5 hours or 10 hours. So those are essentially my goals, is to do better than that. I feel like those are extremely achievable goals. And we get the Defender's Crest. Oh, it's actually a second charm. So I do have two charms in this run. Opening that and then going directly backward because we're going to Isma's Grove before we're going down to the Ancient Basin. And here's the plaque that tells me that I needed to defeat the Dung Defender before going into Isma's Grove. Simple fight with some simple enemies. Come at me. I know that you will. That's your way. Simple fight with some simple enemies. Dealing me quite a bit of damage. Putting me at one. But who am I if I don't put myself into dangerous situations with a lot of confidence? And we have Isma's Tear. The reason that I got Isma's Tear is that I will need that to get to the teacher.
So that little trick right there is one that I came up with myself. I feel very proud. Maybe a very simple thing, but canceling the dash right there in order to skip going around, I felt was pretty neat. I will pay for this bench. I would hate to fight the lost kin, die, and not have paid for this bench. And here's why we needed the crystal heart, other than for getting Ismus here. I did not need that. Let's keep going. Not that far, though. Um, there we go. Start the fight. I think the broken vessel. There's not many. There's not many battles left before the Hollow Knight. The broken vessel is is one of the easier ones left, in my opinion. I think other people have more trouble with the broken vessel than I do, but I've I've done very well against the broken vessel in my attempts. I said the lost kin before. That's because I can never never remember between the Lost Kin and the Broken Vessel. The Lost Kin is the Dreamland hard version of the Broken Vessel. We're not going to be fighting that. We'll be fighting the Broken Vessel. The easy one. Which seems to be going pretty well. I don't know how many nail upgrades I had when I first fought him, but I think it was a couple. Defeating the Broken Vessel gives us access to a very important ability. It's important because it's, it's necessary to get to the Watcher, but also it's quite useful overall. The Double Jump. The Monarch Fly Wings is something that I have... I just have in my mind these days to use the Monarch Fly Wings in basically against every boss and every situation in the game. So getting them is important. Now we have everything that we need to go pretty much straight through to the end of the game. So I'm going straight at the Dreamers now. The Watcher comes first. Let's go up. Here's why we needed the Monarch Fly Wings. That jump right there. That is what tipped me off that I needed to go down to the Ancient Basin and essentially do all of that extra work that I just did was for that jump. I'm going to go save at this bench, and this is mainly for safety's reasons. And then here is a secret that I found, but too late to utilize in my original playthrough. I think it'll be quite nice here. That's, I guess, one less Watcher Knight we have to fight. Alright, Watcher Knights. You are one of the few battles I have left. And I need to be careful. I need to treat this as a challenge. What if I do not get damaged? Let's try to not get damaged at all on the Watcher Knights. Whoops. Ho ho, I got damaged. Heal. Got a heal off. And then got hit not long afterward. Come at me. Oh, not different forms, though. I like it when you do the same thing, not different things. Heal. I got a heal in. This is where it would be nice to have a stronger nail. Really would. just to get past this battle a little bit faster. The problem is there's a lot of them. I need to be careful while I'm fighting them. I will 
will certainly not allow the Watcher Knights to ruin the run, though. Come on. There we go. Heal once. Got it. Got hit on that one. Did not like that. The Watcher Knights are a good one to use the Vengeful Spirit on because they're often on the bottom next to each other. So you can get essentially two hits in with the Vengeful Spirit pretty easily. Heal once. Have to heal. Alright, got the heal off successfully. Heal again. Wonderful. The number of times that I've been at one health during this run has been a little bit disturbing. But so far, it's been okay. And here's another time. Let's heal a little bit. Oh gosh. Jump over him, heal again. Great. Die. Also, I should be more careful. Be more careful. I just want to get past the battle, but I really need to be careful. <laughs> Wonderful. Take that, Watcher. I'm not sure if you're one of the ones that wanted me to break the seals or not. So there is the Watcher. Next is the Teacher, and then the Beast. I don't know how much money it takes to unlock the King Station Stagway. I'm basically just hoping that we have enough. All right, how much is this stagway? 300. Ick. Let's fight a couple enemies for money. You're too simple of an enemy. Let's get this money chest. I know these enemies, the big grunts, have money. They've got more than the usual. There we go. Got enough for the stagway. This is where I'm going to collect a couple of the mask shards. Of all of the mask shards in this game, I think this one is one of the fastest ones to collect. So I'm collecting this one. The one where we collected it via grubs was another one of those. This heads right into the Fog Canyon, where I need to go for the teacher. The big guy didn't bounce as much as the bouncers did. So the next mini boss that I'm going to fight, the fight that I'm the most worried about aside from the Hollow Knight, I did give the curator the name, the curator for the delicate curiosities, before I knew that there was the concept of, of delicate in this game. The concept coming from the delicate flowers. Oh man, let's not just walk into the enemy here. We need Quirrell to help us, of course. Quirrell is essential for this battle. Let's... Come on, hit him, Curl. There we go. Don't like where you hit him, though. It's a little bit far from where I am. We're on a timer here, Quirrell. Come on, do your thing. Yes! Alright, and this is a good spot, because I can hit it a bunch of times. Okay. 
I believe in you, Quirrell. Got him. Good job, Quirrell. Couldn't do this without you. So of, so for being one of the bosses that I was worried about, I've actually done really well on this one. That could change at a moment's notice, I guess, but it's gone very well so far. I guess I know the patterns of this boss more, and having Coral deal the the hit rather than requiring me to deal the hit like it is in the God Home does make the boss a lot easier. I never put on my Defender's Crest. I got the Defender's Crest, I wasn't expecting to get it, and I've rested at a couple benches since then. Just haven't thought about putting it on. In theory, it helps everywhere. One more time. I'm sure I've got it this time. Got him. Got him with the spell, too. And now we can go down to the teacher. I know that I never talked to you on the various places we've seen you before, Coral, but you were an invaluable. Oh, I did not notice that at all. I guess we never learned his name because we never talked to him in the Black Egg or at any of the other places where you meet Quirrell in the game. That's cool. That is a very nice touch that they did not have to put in the game. The Watcher's Nights was surprisingly difficult for me in this particular attempt. Don't know why that was. I fought the Watcher Knights several times before doing just fine. And there is the teacher. Here is the fungal core. The reason that I'm going through the fungal core, there's, there's two reasons really. The other way to get to the deep nest would have me fighting the mantis lords, and it's nice to avoid that fight. And then the other reason is that going this path gets me a mask shard. The last mask shard that I'm planning to get, I'm going to buy from Sly. Down into the fountain. A good time to save. And a good time to put on my second charm. Why not, right? Now, let's go into the beast den. And let's get hoodwinked. <laughs> it's hard to tell what's happening because I'm wearing the Defender's Crest. There's one reason that I'm worried about the Beast Den in particular, and that's because I think that I have to fight some of those enemies. Like this one right here. And I have to fight them in this small little area. In fact, I'm going to heal. And I never really learned how to fight these in the small little area, so I might die. This could be the first death. If I just wait and time my attack... There we go. Time the attack. I'm the attack. Also, I think the Defender's Crest might actually be helping there. Wonderful. 
think I can jump over you. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, and that might kill me. Time the attack. Heal once. Time the attack. Come on. There we go. Oh gosh, and I died. Luckily, we're just starting in the beast den. And I don't know that I need my money for anything. So that death is probably not the worst one to have possibly happened. Come on. You are the problem. Stalker Devout has killed me where nothing else has. Also, I didn't even realize I was in the attack range of that one. By the way, the how well this has gone so far makes me feel a lot better about Steel Soul mode. Because that was my first death in the speed run. Ho ho, the Defender's Crest killed it. Now let's beat you for real. It really looks like I can jump over it. But I was tricked the first time. I will not be tricked this time. Come on. Gosh. Alright, heal. Gotta be careful. Stalking devout. Most dangerous enemy in the game. Bar none. Come on. Another. Got him. And now that that trial has passed, we will fight another one. The last one, though. Got him. Great. And the last of the Dreamers. Now all that's left is the Hollow Knight. One hour, 54 minutes in. If I were to do this again, I, I don't know that I will, but if I were to do this again on the same route, I think that I could beat this in less than two hours. Now, how much does the Stagway cost? 250. That means that I don't think I have enough to buy the mask shard not without collecting a little bit more cash which i can do there are places to easily get cash but you know what i'm going to do i'm going to do it the risky way we're going to go straight at the hollow knight we don't need no stinking mask shards I release you from your bonds, Hollow Knight, so that we can fight in glorious combat. And the goal here is to be safe. Try not to die. There's a lot of abilities that I do not have that I had, like I cannot not dash through him, for example. My nail is a lot shorter than when I fought the, Nalo the Hollow Knight before. But I think I can do it. I think I'm going to go for it. Let's collect the darkness, of course. Second death. Okay. The fact that my nail is short means that I need to be a little bit more careful, because I need to get a little bit closer to the Hollow Knight than I 
think that I need to. Great. Staggered him once. Oh gosh. I was trying to just get behind him, and he hits behind him a little bit there, doesn't he? I've learned that he hits behind him a little bit there. Alright, needed heal spot. He jumped at me. Let's heal. Holy cow. How did I not get hit there? <laughs> oh man, he shifted between those two moves a little bit faster than I thought he would. And I apparently hit him in the face. Like, I hit his face, which hurt me. There is a part in this battle where he hurts himself, right? I am waiting for that. I am welcome for him to start contributing to the battle. Heal again. This is going very well. Okay, he starts hitting himself. And we heal while he does that, because... Having some life would be good. Dodge all of this mess. Get in a small cheap shot on him. Now this... I apparently have just learned how to, how to dodge that. You dodge back and forth. Awesome. I did not know how I was going to handle that attack, but apparently I just learned how to deal with it. Oh gosh, he's hitting me with his, his face. Come on. I think I have this. It's just a matter of dealing the damage. And not getting hit all of a sudden a whole bunch, like I just did there. Like that. I managed to get a, a very unsafe heal off there. Heal. Hit. Heal one more time. He's like barely attacking now. I think we're near the end. Yes! All right, and I will call that time. Two hours and two minutes. As far as what I'm going to do next, uh, I'm going to keep 
putting out the same videos for Hollow Knight as I normally do. I'm going to keep going through the God Home. There's another achievement that is 100%ing the game with a speed completion. I'm not going to be live streaming that. But the next thing that I'm going to live stream for Hollow Knight is live streaming Steel Soul mode. That's going to take a lot longer. I'm going to be a lot more careful. I'm going to get a lot more of the things. So it'll be multiple live streams, not just one go like the speedrun was. But that's what you can expect for Hollow Knight. Don't know when that's going to happen yet. And of course, more videos every Sunday. So ignoring the fact that I definitely screwed up when I pressed the button to go to the next split, that's how long it generally took to go through things for me on this run. I ended up dying twice. I died once to the Hollow Knight and once to a Stalking Devout. That does achieve both of the achievements. I basically cut 40 hours off my personal best right there. This was my first speedrun. This was the first speedrun for Hollow Knight. And honestly, it's the first speedrun that I've, I've ever done. I, I don't really speedrun games. I've done a couple speedrun completions in games, but I've never like had splits or done it live or anything like that. So this is my first time doing all of that. And percentage 27. <laughs> oh, and the game is 2 hours 28 seconds is what it says. That's removing the time it took me to insert my batteries in my controller. <laughs> 